Hello again, everyone. 1962 Ford. This is what was known as a unibody. Here's why it's called a unibody. You can see that the bed comes all the way up to the door. There's no separate bed. So kind of a rare truck. They made these in 1961, two and three. This is my brother's truck. He recently traded for it. And we got a few things that he wants to do to it. So let me finish my walk around and we'll discuss what he wants changed on this truck. I mean, the truck looks nice as far as the outside. I don't think he's really making any, gonna make any major changes on it. Looking at the engine compartment, this is a 302 carbureted engine. That's air conditioning, power steering. Really clean under the hood. Nice interior. This was custom made by an upholstery shop. You can see the pattern in the back of the seat. Kind of unique. And door panels match. But hey, where's the instrument cluster? Well, we've already taken it out. I'll show you what it looks like. We got it over there on the bench. But this is where the changes start to happen. We're going to remove this steering column. He has a tilt column we're going to put in its place. And I think you can tell this column is really long. Of course, the trucks were, you know, they were... They were work trucks. They weren't made for too much comfort. But the column he has is going to be shorter. And he has new instrument cluster gauges along with the surround. I'll show you those. And the original wiring harness on this truck. Now, it works fine, but it has the old glass fuses and uh, you know, this wiring is 60 plus years old. So we're going to be putting a new wiring harness on it also. And here's the old instrument cluster. Uh, everything on this is in on one big pod. You can see we've got speedometer, generator light fuel gauge, temperature, and oil pressure light. So we've, as you can see, we've taken that off the back of this. And we still need to use this bezel, but here's a new surround that goes in it. A good tight fit there. And we marked here where the gauges will be. I'll show you those in a minute. But we have four gauges, then the speedometer and the tack here in the center. So we'll have to cut cut these circles that we marked. That one needs to be bigger. That's bigger. And I think from looking at this, I think we we leave we leave this road edge like up in here, because that supports the new bezel. But we'll be doing that. And let me show you the gauges. These are sharp gauges. And we have the high beam and right and left indicator LEDs. That's what those three little lights are for.
and we should have all the electrical connections and the sending units and everything to hook these up. But there's the back of the gauges. And here's a new wiring harness. It has modern type fuses under that cover. Flasher, there's an extra relay there mounted on the harness. And we have one more thing that we're gonna change on the inside of the truck. And that's the steering column. And here's the steering column. Is a tilt wheel uh, has a GM type connector for the turn signals the harness that goes to that so we'll have to adapt that over to the Ford and this is a chrome finish on this column so quite a few things that we're going to be changing on the truck uh, and I forgot to mention one more thing. He is going to change the rear springs. There they are laying down there. Uh, one of the old springs has a, it's bent on the end. So new springs are in order. As we begin the changes on this truck, I think today we're gonna try to get the steering column pulled out. Uh, I know it has a coupler down at the steering box that'll have to be taken loose and then the shifter is on, it's on the column too, so we'll have to figure out how it unhooks. But we'll try to get this steering column out. So let's get started. All right, got a packing pad, as I call it, over the fender to protect it. So there's what we have to unhook. My only question is the shift rod. I don't see any way that can go through the floor of the cab. It's right there. So this column is going to have to come out through the bottom. But let me look at the inside. Maybe we can tell a little more. Looks like there's some kind of a sleeve around it there where it goes against the floor. I guess we'll start taking things loose under the dash and we'll take the shift rod loose. Take this joint loose right there and see if, how it acts, see if it'll come out. Okay, at the shift lever unhooked, went right here. And there's that arm I was talking about that extends down to the column. And in the linkage, I think you can see maybe there's a linkage that had two set screws with lock nuts. I just took them completely out. So now that when we move the steering column, that shaft should pull off. Well, the column definitely has to come out from the engine side, but I've taken, taken everything off so the tube will slide down. Here's what it looks like out here under the, in the fire, on the firewall. So that shift lever will not, he's turned it there now, it will not allow that to come out from the interior. So we're hoping we can just hold the linkage out of the way and it'll slide out through the bottom of the frame. All right, we got the column out. We come out from the engine side 
And we had to raise the front of the truck up to get it completely out, but it's out of there. That's quite a job. There's what's left of the column and the tube, the shifter arm. So we'll just saw this across here and drill new holes a little bit lower and that'll raise this up in the dash. So the steering column will be higher than the old column was. Give you more leg room. When they put the vintage air in or whatever brand it is, instead of taking these out, they just, these are the old controls. They just cut them off. There's three of them right behind the dash there. So the knobs are still in the dash, we won't be using those anyway. And the plan is if we can, if those cables and wires or whatever are long enough on those vintage air controls, we're gonna to try to move them over here to where those three controls are. Okay, that ought to make it set up closer to the dash, and it does. I don't want to go much closer because the gate's closer. So. We've got the column mounted in the dash in the position that he wants it. So now we're underneath and we're going to try to hook up the shift linkage. Here's the linkage arm took off to get the column down through the hole in the firewall. And there's some screws that he's taken out that holds this. Well, let's get to work on this instrument cluster. So I'm gonna get the gauges out of the package and just confirm that they mount like I think they do. I think they have two posts that go through and a piece on the back that holds them flush against the, the old bezel like that. But let's get them out and look at them just to be sure. And yes, that is the way they work. You see the clamp that goes on the back and it just tightens down. This will push against the back of the old bezel and pull the new one Make a good tight fit. So first thing we need to do is cut the holes in the old bezel. All right, I have my nippers. I'm gonna attempt to cut this part out first. And we'll have to bore holes on these other four. But let's see if we can get this cut out. All right, with a little help from the cutoff wheel on the grinder, we got the first two cut out. I was able to use the nippers after I got through the initial bead right here. That's really tough stuff. So let's see what that looks like. Looks like we're a little shy, so we're gonna have to do some more trimming. But that's better than too big. All right, I think we're good there. We'll try the two larger gauges just to make sure they'll go through the opening that we've cut. If they do, then we'll get these four smaller gauge holes bored. All right, they're both free and move, we'll move around, so I think we're good. Got our hole saw and a drill press. And I have my circles marked with an X in the middle. Well, we got the four holes cut out. 
And now we're using some paint stripper because these corners, this white shows through on the aluminum. So we're trying paint stripper. We think that'll take it off just enough to where you won't see any more white. It says two minute. We'll see how, how if that's true or not. All right, putting the gauges in. Good tight fit, ain't it? Ain't going nowhere, are they? Putting the LEDs in for the high beam and the right and left blinker. Lots of fingerprints where it's being handled. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna set it in the truck and just see what it looks like. <laughs> Well, it fit back in there, which it should by using the stock bezel underneath that. It's pretty good. Yep. All right, we're gonna change these springs. Uh, this side looks like it might be pretty simple. Well, you haven't had the bolts out though, have you? Yeah, they've been out before, right? haven't they? Okay, yeah, they look like they'll come out all right. This is just keep the rear end up where it belongs, and hopefully we can just pull the spring out, put the new spring in. And there's the new springs. Wasn't too bad of a job. The main problem we had was those front bolts. It's They kind of seized up in the bushing of the old spring. All right, we're gonna let it down. Uh, the old spring had four leaves. These new springs, we're using three. So we're gonna see if it sets correctly when we put the, put it down make sure it don't go all the way to the floor all right let's see how low she goes down 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 what do you think I think if we could left it from four and it'd been too tall, wouldn't it? Yeah. Time them springs get wore in a little. All right, we're gonna call that a successful. Are we still gonna call it a successful? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, that job is finished. Well, they had this truck. Uh, this had, of course, these are truck springs, and they're heavy. And he took out two, didn't he say? Four. He took out four. Yeah, it had nine leaves. Wow. But anyway, it was heavy springs made for hauling. Well, that's going to wrap it up for part one of the 62 Ford Unibody F100. Quite a bit accomplished in this first part, but stay tuned for part two when we'll be finishing up the steering column and the instrument cluster and the wiring. We still need to get 
get going on it. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Well, we hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, how about giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. Thanks.